Welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, we've got a, a, a treat. We've got Esben Oxholm again with us here today. He's going to go over the new Keyshot 8 feature called Scattering Medium. And you should be able to see the example up there on your screen. It's a, a great new feature. He'll go into that if you're interested in finding out more, of course. Uh, you can visit keyshot.com and go to the what's new a lot of info in the manual as well and yeah if you haven't yet just go to keyshot.com slash try and give it go yourself so esben are you there yep i am great welcome and uh yeah let's go ahead and get started all right sure so hey everybody thanks for joining us on this thursday evening or morning or night depending on where you are located um so for the next 45 minutes or so i hope to make you good friends or at least get to know the scattering medium this new material in keisha date just one of many new cool features in keisha date and uh, i will be showing you uh, how to create or use this scattering medium to create uh, fog and smoke and these kind of uh, light rays um, in your scenes that you see here in this example. So before we begin, uh, this webinar will be recorded and posted to YouTube on the official Keisha channel. Um, and uh, you can ask questions if you're watching this live right now, you can uh, do it in the uh, go to webinar chat. And I know that Rex will take care of the questions and uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, feel free to ask questions and comment down below. I am presenting this on a uh, Threadripper 9050X uh, CPU. And uh, I mentioned this because the um, scattering medium is a CPU heavy feature. So just for you to know that um, this might rest up a bit faster on, on this system than on yours, but uh, uh, should be good anyways, yeah. So the agenda for today is to uh, quickly cover what the scattering medium is, um, to tell and show what you can create with the scattering medium, showing a few cool examples. And then I'm going into a bunch of different uh, live demos where I will show you how to set up different effects with this scattering medium material. And in the end, we have time for question and answers. So. Um, feel free to write them in the uh, in the chat field at any time, and we will take them in the end. So, what is the scattering medium? And um, it's a material type for solid objects. So, to use it, you need to have some kind of geometry in your scene that you add this uh, material to, and it should be a solid uh, geometry. You can't use it for surfaces. You need uh, a solid where we have all this scattering medium uh, happening inside and um, also to answer this question i went to the keyshot 8 manual it has been uh, upgraded a lot and i think it's a, a pretty good place to go where once you are in doubt of any of the features inside keyshot so this is what it says about the scattering medium and it says that you can create particles and create effects like fog and smoke and volumetric lighting uh, as you see here these uh, light rays and beams happens because we have the scattering medium um, enclosing this scene so um, without the scattering medium in this scene you wouldn't see any of these light beams it all um, it all happens because of the scattering medium so what can you create i have already said this a bit but just to reiterate um, you can create fog and mist and volumetric effects. Um, you can use the scattering medium to show light ray, rays from, um, from focused lighting, like uh, the spotlight here. You can use it for smoke and steam as well, especially if you uh, get your hands on some uh, VDB textures. I will talk about more about that later, uh, but you can really create some realistic looking uh, smoke, um, um, yeah, parts of smoke. And then you can also use it for porous materials like sponge or foamy materials where we have a lot of holes in them. Um, so it's, uh, at least for me, it was a, a surprising use for this material, but it's actually quite nice uh, for that as well. 
So let's have a look at some um, actual examples. And let's start with this pretty amazing image from uh, John Samer, um, where we really see how the scattering medium helps to create atmosphere and we get this um, this atmospheric perspective where we can see the uh, the further away you get from the camera, the more dense this uh, this scattering medium gets and just adds a whole lot to this image and we really see the direction of the lighting as well um, compared to if we didn't have the scattering medium in this scene. We have a, a similar example from Magnus Skog Skogsfjord um, where we have this light uh, shining through the trees and we see the rays coming from all the holes um, from the light shining through the leaves. So again, this uh, scattering medium really makes uh, this shot. Uh, without it, it would have been uh, not as exciting at all, in my opinion. Then we have this uh, BB-8 from uh, Nils Pirma, um, where he has used spotlights on it and enclosed the scene with this scattering medium material uh, to show the rays of these uh, spotlights. So we get this uh, nightclub feeling to it. Uh, I think that is pretty cool. <clears throat> it can also be used for more subtle effects. So this is an image from uh, the forum user playing 99. And um, here again, it's uh, enclosing the scene, but it's way more subtle, just barely uh, showing the, the rays of the headlights here and, and here as well. So before the scattering medium, this would probably be something you would go into Photoshop afterwards to do. Um, but now you can have it directly inside Keyshot and um, that gives you flexibility because if you change the angle or something like that, then the rays will follow and fit perfectly. Um, then you can also use it for effects like this, um, where we have this gall ring created by Nacho Riesco. Um, again, sitting in this atmospheric scene with some mist, um, covered in mist here at the bottom and more visible here in the top. So again, a really cool shot that wouldn't have been as exciting without the scattering medium. And here's an example of the smoke created with a VDB texture. Um, that you can use uh, for creating some really um, um, realistic looking uh, smoke using the scattering medium material as well. And the uh, porous materials, this, uh, I, I really like this material. Uh, I believe that Dries created it as well, um, where we see um, all these holes inside the material. Um, I really get this spongy look. And again, uh, I had to try it myself, so I did this. And I will be covering in the live demos, demo as well how to create something like this. And yeah, that brings me to the live demos. So <clears throat> just to uh, show you what you can expect for the next 30 minutes or so. Um, first of all, I will cover a basic setup, um, creating something like this, show you what elements you need in your scene to um, to show the light rays and use the scattering medium for a general uh, mist effect. Then I will be covering how to use that in uh, in this scene here to create this uh, the rays from this sunset, what kind of lighting you need, what kind of settings you need for your scattering medium. And then we will be covering this uh, underwater scene where we have all these caustic rays. Um, and uh, this is kind of faked, um, but it's, uh, I think it's a really uh, convincing way to, way to fake uh, caustics and all these rays going down. Then I will cover how to create this smoke using a VDB texture. And we will have a look at this porous material. Um, and also, if we have time for it, I hope so, um, I will show you how to set up a more abstract animation using the scattering medium uh, like you see here. All right, so let's go into Keyshot and have a look at the basic setup and settings. So here inside Keyshot, I have my towers and you can see here in the geometry view, that's all we have. We have the camera and that. So to add in the scattering medium, 
uh, I need some uh, geometry. The scattering medium is a material. So um, you can prepare that in your CAD software, or you can add in a simple cube, for example, here directly inside Keyshot. So that's what I am going to do. And uh, to do that, I go to Edit, Add Geometry, and select Cube. And I get this uh, tiny cube, and I will rescale it here in my geometry view. So I hit OK here. Make sure it's selected over here in the scene tree, and then right-click and select Move Selection. I activate my scale tool and make this really big. So it's enclosing my entire scene, something like that. So from here, there are two ways to create the uh, scattering medium material. You can go to the uh, library and go to the scattering medium um, group and start by selecting the scattering medium fog basic, for example, and drag onto your cube like this. Or you can, uh, like with any material, double click on the part you want to add the material to and change the material type to scattering medium. It's nested down here on the advanced. So I do that. All right. So at first we don't see anything. And um, we have a lot of different options here that we can adjust. And um, to better give you an idea of what happens when you adjust these, uh, I have prepared a few slides that I will go through. Um, so the basic settings. First of all, we have the transmission. It determines the color of the material, uh, the color of your smoke or the color of your, your fog and so on. And uh, I've created three different examples here. We have it set to light gray, red, and green. And you can see how that affects this uh, VDB scattering medium material. Um, great. So that, that, yeah, that determines the overall color of the smoke. Then we have this transparency distance. And it controls the uh, um, how saturated the um, the color is, and also how dense your um, fog is. So, um, if you think that your smoke is looking too saturated, then uh, bumping up this distance will make it less saturated, or at least the thin areas will get less saturated, and vice versa. And uh, if we go to the examples here, we can see that with a low transparency, transparency distance, the fog or smoke will look uh, more solid and more saturated. And as it gets higher and higher, it will look, um, yeah, have less color and look less thick. The density determines the distance between the particles. And uh, again, um, the lower this setting is, the more thin the uh, scattering medium will look, and the higher it is, the more dense it will look. So we can have a look at the um, examples here. A density of two, it looks thin and not so saturated. And as it gets higher, it gets more thick and more saturated. Then we have this multiple scattering, and it will uh, make uh, the light rays bounce inside the, uh, multi uh, inside the uh, scattering medium and it will give you a more physical correct result, but also add a lot to the rendering time. So I would say you should use this, this with care, but if we take a look at the examples, you can see that here when we have it on, it looks, uh, yeah, it looks more realistic uh, to me as well um, and more bright as well because the light is scattering inside it. So use that if you, uh, you feel the need that you need a bit more realism to this and have time to let the render for some for a longer time. Then we have this albedo color. And I would say that in most cases, you don't need to adjust this one. Um, but you can use it to make your smoke look thicker or at least uh, make it look darker or brighter. So if you take the albedo color down, um, it will look darker. And if you take it uh, to a bright value, it will look lighter, uh, as you see here. You can also use a color uh, for this, but I would say that, uh, at least in my experience, it's a bit tough to, uh, oops, 
to adjust because yeah, sometimes you get the opposite color of your uh, pick here. Um, so yeah, try it out and see if you can use it. But I would uh, suggest you that in most cases, cases that you only use the grayscale colors. Then we have the scattering directionality and um, <clears throat> it determines um, whether light should be scattered backwards or scattered through this material once it hits it. So at zero, um, the uh, amount is uh, uniform or the scattering is uniform. And if it's a, a positive value, it will scatter more light through the material, making the material look thinner or and more bright. And if it's a negative value, it will make the uh, material look uh, darker and uh, a bit thicker, more solid, um, as you can see in the example here. So mostly it affects uh, the brightness of this. Um, not too much on, on, the, on the positive value, but we definitely see a difference here where we have it at negative 0.5. And the final one is the samples, and um, it determines uh, how noisy this material will look. And uh, I think that a default of 16 uh, gives you a pretty good look, but if you find that you want it to look smoother, then try and bump it up to 32 or 64, uh, but be aware that this, this will affect your rendering time uh, as well. So uh, I have an example here as well, uh, but it's quite tough to see with this low res, but there, you would definitely see a difference uh, if you render this out in a higher resolution. And then if we switch from the properties to the textures, we have this density texture. Um, and you can use this to, um, to add these VDB maps to create this kind of smoke form. I have used this smoke VDB. Or you can use uh, three procedures um, from, the, uh, from the drop down here. Uh, and here's an example we have just changed the uh, changed it from the uh, VDB map to spots and it will create all these spots uh, floating in free space instead. So there's a lot of creative uses using all these procedural textures in uh, conjunction with the uh, scattering medium material. And uh, VDB textures, you can find some free online on the openvdb.org.download or slash download. Um, this is where this uh, bunny is taken from that Dries has rendered out pretty cool. And you can also try and search online on, uh, on the different pl platforms for VDB and see um, or find some different VDB textures that people sell. And you can also, if you have uh, Houdini, for example, try and create them yourself. Uh, there's a pretty good tutorial uh, here that you can try and follow. All right, let me try and go in and finish up um, this scene here because besides uh, the scattering medium, you also need some kind of focus lighting. At least I have found it's a bit hard to uh, get anything to show with just the environment. So I will add in a sphere by going to edit, add geometry and select sphere. And move it up. Oops, I hit okay here, select it here and move it up here. And then go ahead and add a spotlight material to this. So now everything became quite bright. So let me try and take the power down. Maybe two, two, and we start to see some blue color. So let me double click this um, scattering medium part to uh, get into the uh, material properties. And uh, I think that right now it's way too dense. So let me try and take this uh, density down. Doesn't help too much. Um, oops, seems like I have some. All right, so let me try and set up the lighting without showing this first. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I accidentally applied this scattering medium to my um, torus. So let me just add this plastic material again, like this, way better. So now let me go into my scattering medium, take this density down. So now we start to see something. 
Um, and now my lighting might be too bright. So there's a lot of different things that need to uh, come together when you're setting up a material like this. Oh yeah, so my transparency distance, um, it's way too low now. So uh, to make it less uh, thick, I have to take this up. Uh, here we go. So let me try and do five centimeters and let me try and make it a bit more dense. And let me try and give it a bit more light, maybe less. So yeah, these lighters work, of course, together. So you have to find a good balance between them um, to get a good look. Um, so I did that here, and I know it's a bit different, um, but we can see that I found um, this transparency distance at 50 centimeters and a density of one. It gave me this uh, good result. And to show the, the lighting on, uh, on here, I added in this um, ground plane. So this is with and without. And for the spot lighting here, I ended up at 17 watts. So this is uh, also depending on your scene units. So don't take these uh, exact numbers, but try and use your eyes. Um, so whoops, one thing I like to do as well to make these uh, rays a bit more visible when you have them, uh, that is to go to the uh, image tab and add an image style. Um, and when you create that, and go to photographic um, then you can add some contrast and also bump up the exposure and that will help you to really uh, draw out these uh, these rays and shadows in the scattering medium so let's try and stop here and move on to uh, to the next example and hope that it will go a bit better um, sorry for this uh, these problems uh, we'll try and see and use the same technique to create this kind of scene so I have my geometry here, um, and it's, it's actually created with uh, displacement maps only, so we can see that it's a flat plane and some uh, disks. And let's start by adding in a sphere that we can use as the sun. And so go to edit, add geometry, and select sphere. And this takes some time in this scene because of all the displacement. Um, for some reason, it also affects uh, the performance when I add in this sphere. Well, oh, here we go. So let me move it. Um, I will move it backwards um something something around here and then adjust the scaling as well so let's try and place it oops place it around here and then add a um area light material to this one so I pick area light and make it kind of yellow and then let me try and take this uh, environment brightness down so we can see the brightness of this sphere only. So let me try and change the uh, power to or the uh, unit to watts. And I think I need a lot here because I haven't been too careful about the scene unit. So uh, I need to bump this up a lot. Um, so now we see the lighting hitting um, the, the buildings here. So to get this uh, all these rays, we have to add in a, a cube and add a scattering medium material to it. So I do that by go to edit, add geometry and add the cube. And we probably have to wait just uh, a few seconds again for that to import.
here we go so we can see here and uh, I'll just hit OK and make sure it's selected here and move selection and scale it here in the geometry viewer and make sure that it covers my entire scene and it's especially important that it covers the uh, the light source um, so you see right now you can see this tiny dot that is my sphere uh, the sun so if it's not inside this scattering medium uh, we don't see it at all um, yeah at this moment I haven't applied that yet but you will see that in a moment um, so like this and then I take this cube material um, and let me uh, try and drag um, this basic fog from the library now. Uh, it's kind of a medium fog. Let me apply it here directly to the cube. Oh, well. Yeah, all right. So we just had a crash there, but let me try and open it up again. Um, so while it opens, um, I can show this example uh, meanwhile. Um, because when you need to have, or when you want to have these rays, you can do it in two ways. Um, one way is to use the geometry uh, by having all these high skyscrapers that we had here, but we can also create it um, as you see here um, by using a texture on this spotlight material. Um, so to do that, again, we have to add in this cube to act as the uh, scattering medium. So I go to add geometry and add um, cube. Like this, and hit OK. Scale it here in the geometry viewer. Like this. And double click it, change the material to scattering medium. And uh, then I go ahead and add in a sphere that I will use for applying the spotlight material. So let me pick the sphere and move the selection up like this. And go ahead and apply a spotlight material. Again, let me hide my cube while I uh, adjust my spotlight. All right. So I think this is open now as well. Let me pause that. And let me dial the power of this one down. Great. I think this is good. And then let me bump up the beam angle to cover the entire scene here. All right. And then let me turn on my scattering medium. Take the transparency distance up by a lot. Here we go. Um, I think this looks quite good. Maybe try and dial in this uh, transmission color to something a bit more nice beachy look. Could be something like this. And then to uh, have all these uh, caustic patterns, I go to my uh, spotlight material and here in this color, I will drag in um, this caustics map that I created inside uh, After Effects. So let me do that drag it over here and then maybe change the size of this one like this and now we see start to see all these light rays coming from that texture and that spotlight and um, so we might have to bump up the power and we can also go to the image tab again and add an image style where we go to uh, photographic and bump up the exposure and contrast to uh, really dial in these uh, rays here. So with the image style and without 
um, yeah, I really find it's it's easier to bump up the uh, the contrast and visibility of the rays using these image styles. Great. So let me try and go back to uh, this scene here. And um, add in the cube. and add in this sphere right away. <clears throat> cool. So let me zoom in here and let me pick my cube and make that big. Uh, like this, make sure it covers the whoops, covers the entire scene. And then let me see if I can make this a scattering medium right away without crashing. Let's see. Looks good so far. Very low transparency distance. So let me try and bump this up from the beginning. Good. And then I can take um, my sphere, move it over here move it back in my scene, but make sure to keep it inside uh, the scattering medium geometry. And let me scale it down and do like this, cool. So let me add a uh, spotlight or uh, area light material to this sphere, make it warm like a sunset, something like that. And let's try and bump up uh, the brightness as well. Uh, change the unit to watts. Now it's really bright, good. And then let me take my scattering medium material and uh, dial that in. So I go to my cube here and uh, right now it's way too, um, too thin. So I take the transparency distance down or I could try and take the density up as well. So. All these different parameters will make the uh, scattering medium look um, more thin or more thick in different ways. So, and you need to find some kind of combination that works for your specific example. Uh, let me change the color of of our fog here to uh, a neutral color, and now we start to see these beautiful rays. Um, and again. Uh, if you see the rays or not, depends uh, uh, on the scattering medium, of course, how dense it is. And it also depends on uh, how your light source is. Um, so not to spend more time on this than necessary. Um, hey. Can try and, yeah. hey, Esben, um, yeah. can you just knock back your CPU cores to about 50% or so? Okay. Yeah, there's a bit of a lag. I think that could help. All right. Thanks. I'll try and do that. Oops. Yeah. So uh, I outputted this um, animation of this scene, and you really start to see how the race uh, looks different depending on where the light is positioned uh, in relation to the objects. So this scattering medium also works with animations. And I also have an example for that for the underwater scene, where I have, instead of just a single image as the texture, added a whole uh, row of them, an animated sequence. Um, and it will give you a result like this, where you see all these beautiful rays um, scatter around in this uh, water uh, material created by the uh, scattering medium material. So next up is this um, engine scene with the smoke. Um, let me jump into that one and take the usage down as well. Um, so we have our engine here and I want to add some smoke to one of these uh, exhausts. And uh, to do that, 
again, as usual, I add in a piece of geometry when I, where I can add this scattering medium material too. So I go to edit, add geometry, and add in a sphere in this case. Here we go. I'm not sure why that was so slow. And I position it around this uh, exhaustion and scale it up like this and place it somewhere around this. So after we load the texture in, we can also move the texture around inside this uh, sphere. So this is like our outer boundaries for the smoke texture. Put it like that. And uh, go ahead, double click. Oops. Change the material to scattering medium. Here we go. And um, then I go into the texture tab. And here we can apply a texture. And I will load in um, one that I got from the open VDB side. Um, just two seconds. Here we go. Drag it in as the texture. And you'll see how that converts um, this um, sphere into this uh, beautiful smoke. So uh, when I have this inside the sphere, I can either move the sphere uh, or I can move the texture inside the sphere. So um, I can make it fit the part. So this means that the texture is touching the outer boundaries of the sphere. Um, so if you move the texture around inside, um, be aware that you don't have any clipping, for example. Um, so what I think is better to do is to fit the part and then move uh, the entire sphere to uh, make this fit. So it might be just a bit slow, but if you are a bit careful, you can uh, pretty quickly dial in the uh, correct position of your smoke. So something like this. And to recap on some of the basic settings, uh, if you want this to be thicker looking, we can try and take the density up, maybe to five. See that it starts to look more thick. Um, change the color. Smoke is not typically blue. <clears throat> Uh, like this, and then we could also try and make it darker by taking this scattering directionality down just a bit, so negative 0.2 maybe. And we can also take the transparency distance down to make it look more solid and more thick. So here we go, it starts to look really good now, I think. So that would be the way to work with a, a VDB texture. So now uh, I'm, I'll move on to this porous material and um, I have this scene here. It's just a scanned um, sea star. Got that from 3dscans.com. And um, let's try and add this, uh, I'll create this kind of uh, porous material. So to do that, again, I changed the material type to scattering medium by double click on it and go to type and select scattering and medium. <clears throat> and we see right away that it starts to look a, a bit fluffy, like a, a cloud or something like that. Um, but to get all these holes and everything, uh, what we need to do is to go to textures and, <clears throat> sorry, in the texture dropdown, uh, I will select, uh, in this case, spots. And with that selected, um, I will open up the material graph to um, be able to see the color output of this note. So I selected and hit C on the keyboard and we can see we have these spots here. Um, and what is black is um, 
not going to be shown and what is white is uh, going to be be fully dense um so let me try and scale this up and let me try and bump up the density here we go maybe a bigger radius whoops that's a lot scale it down a bit and maybe add in a few levels something like this so let's try and see yeah now we start to get all these uh this porous uh, surface um so to make it look more convincing i want to make this uh, scattering medium scattering medium material look way more uh, dense so i take the density way up high so could be 30 or maybe try and stick with 20 and take the transparency distance down as well so you see now that it starts to uh, it looks uh, a bit dark um but once you let it rest up you'll start to see the lighting on it and it looks um like a completely dense uh, material but with these holes in it and what i think is really cool is to um, add in a label to this um material by right clicking and selecting um material we can put a paint material or plastic material on top so i hit plastic and add that in as a label and change the color maybe to whoops change the color to red perhaps like this and then i can take this spot texture i use to drive the density of the scattering medium to drive the opacity of the plastic and that will give us this a painted effect of a, a porous material so i think that is quite cool and can be used for some different uh, creative things And that brings me to this um, abstract animation that you know that you also can create using scattering medium. And uh, I have again prepared some geometry. This time it's just a cube, and um, I will make this into a um, scattering medium material by double clicking on it and change the type to scattering medium, like this and then i go ahead to textures and here in the density texture procedural drop down i will select spots once again and uh, here i need the opposite um, i need to have some uh, spots show up and the rest should be invisible so i change the, this color to white and the background to black and uh, again i open up the material graph so get a better idea of, of the texture by selecting it and hitting C on the keyboard like this. So we see right now it's really, really small. Um, so let me take the scale up, something like this, and maybe the radius as well, and then also take the density all the way up. So when we see this preview, you can, we can only see the surface of this 3D procedural, but once I uh, hit C again on the keyboard, we'll start to see how it's, uh, yeah, how it's three-dimensional and using this scattering medium material to show that. <clears throat> Let's add a bunch of levels. And um, I want this in its uh, extreme state to be fully enclosed like this. So I do like that. So uh, yeah, <laughs> take, take the density up and the radius up as well. And now to create this animation, um, here in the material graph, I right click, go to animation and add in a color fade. Double click on that and make sure that it goes from black to white uh, and to black again. Something like that. And then I can take this, drag to my spot texture note here in the material graph and select um, that it should control the radius of all these spots. So when I do that, everything disappears because right now the density or the radius is set to zero. Black is equal zero. And uh, if I open up the animation timeline, you'll see that we have this line here. And let me just make it five seconds long. And then when I start to scrub, we start to see how these spheres uh, come into view and fades out again. So from here, it's just to uh, to adjust it to get the look that you want and 
in my example, they were also like uh, rotating and that was done by just creating a basic rotation to the uh, entire geometry. So you can right click, select animation and select rotation. Let's do like that, make it happen the same time. And now when we play this back, we'll see how it looks. All right. So one thing I, uh, I forgot to mention that I just want to mention as, as uh, the last thing is that um, if we go back to my C star here, if you open up the material, um, if you don't want to create the scattering medium from scratch every time, you can also start with some of the uh, library uh, materials that comes with the installation. So there are foams. Um, so let me just try and show you what they look like. We have this kind of uh, open cell foam. Uh, another uh, instance of that as well. Um, we also have this sponge material that we had on this uh, dock that uh, Dries had done. I really love that. And you also have different fog materials that you can try and add and see what they look like. And you can go into uh, the material properties, see how they are set up. And maybe you have to open up the graph to see how uh, here in this case, a noise texture is added as density to add some variation in the fog. And uh, we also have a couple of uh, open VDB files. Um, so this is a blue cloud to right now. It's uh, bigger than this geometry, but if I double click on it and go to textures and select fit to part, we see how this uh, is actually uh, starting to look like a little blue cloud. And that brings me uh, to question and answers. So I hope this gave you uh, at least just a little insight in how to use the uh, scattering medium material, what it can be used for and how to get started with it. So uh, yeah, thanks for your attention. That was really fantastic, Esben. Thanks for that. I know it's a challenge uh, sometimes working with the processor intensive features um, and streaming the live webinars. Uh, but yeah, you did a, a fantastic job explaining scattering medium and we had some great questions coming in here. So cool. um, let me jump into these. Uh, a good question pointed out by Bill Gould was, can you have say uh, a smoke, a VDB smoke texture uh, coming out of the smokestack of a train and then also have that scene enclosed by a fog. So essentially, can you have uh, a scattering medium object inside of another scattering medium object? And um, yeah, the answer to that is it is not completely supported to have to have that additive scattering medium. So um, you'll likely see the bounding geometry of the uh, the object that the smaller scattering medium is assigned to. I hope that makes sense. Um, let's see here. And then we also uh, just had a couple of people still kind of confused on what a VDB texture is versus the scattering medium. Um, so maybe you can just quickly cover that, uh, yeah. a, sum a quick summary of that one more time. Yeah, definitely. Um, so let me just create a new scene here and let me add in a sphere like that. And then I can go ahead and add a scattering medium material to it. It could take this fog basic. So in essence, the scattering medium material is what uh, contains all these different settings and um, the transparency distance and the density uh, and so forth. And if no texture are applied, then this uh, scattering medium material will be uh, uniformly across the entire geometry. Uh, what you can use uh, VDB textures for or procedural textures, uh, the um, 3D textures, is to uh, define parts of the scattering medium material where it's more dense than others. Um, so if I try and load in this, um, can load in this bunny uh, VDB, we start to see 
that this uh, scattering medium materials, these settings that we have here, uh, turns into the shape of, of this bunny based on this uh, density texture. Um, this texture contains information um, about that these parts here should be more dense than the parts here, for example, and the uh, parts here should be more dense than the parts here. So OpenVDB is kind of a 3D texture that contains uh, information about how dense uh, the scattering medium should be at specific points. Uh, hope that makes sense. Um, for example, yep. if we change, yeah, we can take the um, spots texture again. And if we take the... Oops, if I show the material graph of this. And let me see if we can get some spots. Uh, here we go. So everything that is white will uh, be as dense as you have here in the density and as transparent and everything. And what is black will be uh, not visible at all. So if I go out of this, you'll start to see that we have these uh, black areas where we don't have any uh, of the scattering medium showing up. Cool. Um, we had a question if you could then export and 3D print these objects um, to reflect what you see in the real-time view. And the answer is no, that um, the VDB or uh, scattering medium um, is not actually modifying the polygons of the object. You would have to use something like displacement, um, like as been showed in the uh, that kind of building type scene, uh, and then export that if you wanted to actually 3D print some modified type of geometry. There was a question, uh, what was the displacement map you used for that scene? Yeah. Uh, so um, I used a, a free software to create. Um, let me just find that map. I have that here. Um, so it's this map here. Um, I can't remember the name of the software at this moment, something like JS Placement or something like that. Um, I believe we can put a link somewhere, but uh, it's essentially this texture used uh, across the entire scene. So. For the low suburbs here, it's uh, set at a low um, low height for the displacement. And then here on the disks, it's set uh, way higher. And if I go into one of these, into the material graph, um, you can see that I combined it with a color gradient um, to sort of give different areas different heights. Uh, Looks a bit strange here, but you can see how it's, uh, yeah, have one color here, one, another color here, and then it gets brighter here in the center. So we get different heights uh, based on the same map. So that's uh, cool. yeah, essentially what it is. Mm -hmm. um, Tyler is asking, uh, can this type of scattering medium be applied to an object like a flashlight that would show the light rays coming out of it? Um, and yes, but not exactly. The scattering medium is not assigned to the flashlight itself. As has been showed, it's assigned to a piece of geometry that encloses the scene in order to give the light um, particles to bounce off to see those rays. And um, do you have any general kind of rule of thumb for adjusting transparency distance versus density? Uh, if you were to start a new scene, um, what would be your process to kind of balance out those two sliders? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. Um, I don't think I have made any like uh, process yet on how to do it. Um, I try and start with a uh, with a density. Um, 
maybe of, of five and then I adjust the transparency distance to uh, to find something and I start um, making it really high so it could be something like 100 and then I see if it's too thin or too thick and I adjust from there and then when I find something that I like um, I try and make some adjustments to the density as well and see how that affects the scene so um, I haven't found any like good step-by-step uh, -step process to uh, to adjust these. Uh, okay. Yeah, I don't know if you have any. Um, yeah, I would say, well, in, in this scene, uh, you don't actually have units assigned, um, hmm. but in, in a scene where you do have units, I would suggest to start with a reasonable value for transparency distance. You know, think about what that value would be like in real life if you're in a scene that is, um, you know, millimeters, then how many millimeters would you uh, be actually able to see through that material? So yeah, kind of base that transparency mm. distance off of real world values um, as a starting point, And then I would say adjust the density from there. Yeah, that's a good one. That makes sense. Um, yeah, we also have some questions. Uh, can you use this to produce snow? Um, so I think that would be more like kind of the the sponge type of material. Yeah. I, how I think how would you, you go about doing that? Um, yeah, first of all, that I think the shape of the geometry also is uh, quite important to make it look like snow um, to have the right um, look, but other than that, I would maybe try and start making the transmission color to something light gray. And uh, so it's not very transparent snow, so I would take the that down as well. And yeah, we probably need some to let it sit for a while to dial in on something like that. And then you could perhaps use, again, a very small spots uh, texture to add in a lot of small holes in, in the surface. Um, oops. So maybe scale this down a lot. Um, maybe add some radius and then add some levels to have some different levels uh, of holes. So maybe something like this and get out of that and then yeah, I would have to let it sit or do some some test renderings to see how the final look uh, would be. Um, but I guess this would be a good starting point. Excellent. All right, well, we're at the hour now. Thank you very much for all of that. Um, we'll be uploading a recording of this as soon as we can. And you can check out youtube.com slash keyshot3d for more amazing content. Esbin has been creating some incredible new quick tips and tutorial videos. If you haven't had a chance to check those out yet, please jump on over to our YouTube page and look at those. Um, subscribe if you haven't already, so you'll be notified when we have new content posted. And uh, yeah, thank you very much, Esbin. We'll be looking forward to seeing everyone in next month's webinar. Thanks. Bye, everyone.